Hello once again, Amazing Blue fans. As always, like, share, subscribe. Now let's just get into it. Now, I wanted to talk about Michigan, Michigan schedule for 2019 because uh, I had some people saying the schedule and what's who we got to play and all that, so I figured I'd talk about it. Now, to the main person I'm, ta I'm talking to, he was worried about a team like Northwestern. Well, we don't play Northwestern this year. We play Iowa instead of Northwestern, so it's about the same thing. They both are going to come to play, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through what I think the scores are, are going to be or close to it, and then I'm going to just talk about some more stuff about the team in general. But I see Michigan being 11-2 and two this year, and I'm going to run through the teams we play and what I think the score will be something like. But, you know, once the season starts, you never know who might be good that you expect to be bad or vice versa. So we got Middle Tennessee. I see that as a, you know, a win for Michigan. I see that around like 45 to 10, 50 to 13 or something like that. Then we have Army. Army is going to be running a lot of options. So this will... This will be a good game to see how disciplined these new starters on defense are. But it, should, it shouldn't be close. They'll probably eat up a lot of clock. Second half will end up, the talent will really show. I see that like 31, 10, something like that. Uh, a solid win. Then we have Wisconsin. Now, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, is, they lost some talent last year. Well, at the end of last year. Hornybrook is out, uh, so they should have a first-year starter. So I'm, I'm looking for them to, unless they're just unstoppable with Jonathan Taylor, I'm not sure that they'll be too good, honestly. So I'm, I'm looking at Wisconsin 32-17 to because they're, they're a good team. It, it could be closer, but I'm, I'm looking for us to kind of dominate them. The next game is Rutgers. That's... It's Rutgers, 63-10, 63 63-14, something like that. Then we have Iowa at home in the big house. If this was in Iowa, I would be more worried, but Kirk Ferentz always has them ready to play, Iowa ready to play, so that that could be a close game. I'll, I'll go Michigan 28-21. Illinois next. It feels like we haven't played Illinois in forever, but I don't see them being anything. That's 31, 38, 38, 14, something like that. 40 to 10, something like that. Now, the next week we have Penn State. Penn State lost a lot of talent. You got Trace McSorley gone. Uh, what's the running back name? Miles Sanders, he's gone. They had some other players leave. They just left the program for whatever reason. And then you got your graduating players and players that went pro early. So I don't think Penn State's going to be that good. Like most of the teams that like Wisconsin, Penn State, MSU, I don't see them being good this year, honestly. Now we have Notre Dame next. After Penn State, we have Notre Dame. It's Notre Dame. We we know what they did to us last year, and they, 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 they just have talent and speed. So – Honestly, it's hard to say. I can't just take the game from last year because their starter, we beat their backup for the rest of the year. I mean, we lost to their backup for the rest of the year. So I'm looking for Notre Dame to be good, but I'm I'm looking for us to be good too. So I'm not even going to pick. That could be a toss-up. So we, we could lose that game. We could. I'm looking for a toss-up. I, honestly, I don't know. Notre Dame might beat us well. Good. I, I don't know. Just being honest, I don't know. But that's a non-conference game. It'll hurt us in the final playoff rankings if we're there. But as far as the Big Ten schedule, we, we'd still be undefeated. That's the that's the job number one is win the Big Ten. So if we lose if we were to lose to Notre Dame, everything is still on the table for the playoff and winning the Big Ten. So Whatever happens in that game, it hurts, but it doesn't hurt so bad, especially if they're if they're having a good season, just like this year. I mean, well, this last year. 
We have Maryland next. Maryland has got some talent, and they do a lot of tricky, have a lot of misdirections and stuff with their scheme. So if you're not disciplined, they can score fast. But I'm looking for that to be like 45 to 28. A good, a somewhat good game, but Michigan should pull off, pull away. Then we have Michigan State. Now, this will be in Michigan, so we should have the advantage with the crowd and everything. And honestly, I'm not looking for Michigan State to be that good this year, just like I said before. I'm not, you never know with, uh, you never know with uh, D'Antonio. Though, so Michigan State might come out and, and just be a good team. They, we know they're gonna play us tough. So even if they don't have that much talent, I don't look for us to just dominate them. I look for us to mm, somewhat of a control ass whooping, like like last year. I mean, we dominate them, but we weren't up that much. Will we win that game? Twenty one to seven. So I look for this game to be like twenty four to seventeen. They always, even when we dominate them, we've pretty much dominated them three out of the last four years. But we had to, the one game we lost at the end, dominated them the next year. They won. It's just been, we've dominated them on almost all these games except the year old corn started. But they find a way to stay in the game. D'Antonio will, he finds a way to stay stay in these games against us. So, you know, I'm saying 24-17 because most of these games come down to one touchdown between us. It's just that type of rivalry. He's 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 a good coach. You can't take it away from him. Now, Indiana, Indiana runs a lot of stuff that we aren't, that we don't do well with. Misdirections, misdirections, crossing routes, and throwing downfield, and moving with the quarterback. They have a stud running back that's a sophomore this year. This dude is huge. He's about 6'2", 235. He might be 240-something this year. So I'm looking for this game to be close because it's before OSU. So, you know, regardless of what anybody says, you're going to be looking forward to OSU, especially if we have one loss or no losses. We're going to be looking forward, looking ahead to play in OSU. So, I'm looking for that Indiana game to be close, and then we just kind of pull away at the end, 35-30. And then OSU game, it's a toss-up. I mean, I can't just say we're going to win, beat them. We haven't beat them in so long, so what's the point of me saying we're we we, oh, we going to win? Yeah, let's be real. We just, we hoping that we can win, beat them. Until we see, them, see it happen, we just got to hope for the best. Now, OSU has Justin Fields, and this dude can run, man. I mean, what what can we say? We we know he can run. We'll see if he can throw though. But the way OSU schemes their offense, if all he can do is run, they gonna run it down our throat. Just like when, with J T. Barrett, a lot of those years, they'll just run it down our throat almost every play, or he'll just be back there scrambling. But that's what I see us being. Only games I just see as a real toss-up are Notre Dame and uh, OSU. But every, every, the, the, the big ten, the top teams don't look to be there. It looks like OSU, Michigan, and then everybody else, honestly, as far as talent. And that's just what it's been. Because if you want to just – like we're down on – we, we were down last year on our season, but – if you think about it, we didn't we didn't lose a Big Ten game. We lost the only team we beat we lost to was OSU. We beat all the Big Ten teams. We beat them. We beat Michigan State. We beat Penn State. We beat Indiana. We beat Maryland. We beat Northwestern. We beat all these teams. So it's not like oh the, the Big Ten is we. We can go th go through the Big Ten. It's just we have to finish business with OSU. Nothing else matters. We we can we could we could if OSU wasn't in the Big Ten, we could take the team from last year and won the Big Ten. But they're there. OSU people people they went thirteen and one last year. 
They went 13 and 1. Who knows? They, sh they probably should have been in the playoff over Notre Dame, even with the one loss. They probably would have had a better showing. Let's just be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it real. But besides OSU, the thing that will, will hold us back this year and keep us from making the playoff and beating OSU, it's going to be the same things that have been going on for, I'm not going to talk about the offense really because it looks, hopefully, it'll be taken care of. The defense is where the worries come in somewhat. But as far as the big games, because mobile QBs, that's even mobile QBs that don't even want to run. They just run because we we rush outside with undisciplined, like last year with uh, Rashawn and things like that. He he. Him and Chase will run up the field a little bit undisciplined, and they're creating lanes. They create lanes for uh, Wimbush, and he killed us on them. Devin Bush coming up too far on a uh, coming up too far to QB spy, and he gets caught behind blockers. He gets caught behind his own D line, and Wimbush is running twenty five yards for a first down on third down. Those 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 are are backbreakers when you're playing good teams. So it's crucial that that we we have a plan to stop these these type of QBs. And honestly, if you're playing, if we play zone, honest honestly, I I, I hope I hope Don Brown is running a lot of zone this year. It's great. We all know this, and we've all talked about it. I've talked about it. Don Brown's scheme will destroy bad teams. It'll destroy them. They can't handle the blitzes and the man coverage. It's it's they just can't handle it. So he will he will destroy bad teams. But good teams have the talent and and the pieces and the 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 wherewithal to know how to beat that. They have the talent to beat man and blitzes. They prepare for it, and they will be ready for it. It's nothing new. So when we play them, they're not worried about it, and they're not scared about it. They prepare for it. So they come out, prepare, and execute and beat us. So I would love to see us go to more zone so you can watch the quarterback and not have to work. We're playing man, and everybody's chasing receivers. The D-line's rushing undisciplined, creating lanes for the quarterback to step up and run or step up and throw. So <coughs> it happens every year in these in these certain games. It happened. It basically happened in all, all our three losses. Notre Dame, uh, OSU. Well, OSU didn't. Haskins, he ran for a couple first downs, or but he just kind of he, – he just picked us apart. But Florida did the same thing. Florida had a lot of quarterback runs. So it's crucial that Don Brown gets – I would love to see us be more like that 2016 team, which I feel like is the best real, the best defense we had in a while when the, everybody was playing. Because that team we had – we played a lot of – we played a lot of man and a lot of zone. You see, you saw Mike McCray getting a lot of picks. He was he's a he was a zone linebacker. When we went back to nothing but man, he got exposed a lot because he's better at zone. So I would like to see us go back to a lot of zones on defense and just mix it up and one to be prepared for at OSU because we have to run zones on them. We can't just run man. Same with Notre Dame. You can't just run man all day on them. You have to run zones. Zones are where it's at. Once once you get a, a team, a defense clicking to where everybody knows their assignment, everybody knows what's what's going on within the zone, it's it's a beautiful thing. You'll have so many dudes around the ball and if you got a pass rush and your dudes in the zone know what they're supposed to know how to do their job, it, you won't have a problem, and you'll start seeing way more turnovers 
And it's just a beautiful thing. So I'd like to see him mix that up and play 50-50 depending on who we play. So that's just what I feel about the, the defense and everything because we got, we got young dudes. We got some young dudes that haven't really started because you got Devin Bush gone and Tyreek Cannell. Cannell's gone. Dax Hill should be in that spot, like I said in my last video. But the defense, it's, it's going to be on Don Brown, honestly, because I, I have a lot of faith in this offense because you got – the offense has a lot of juniors coming back. You got four starters on the, on the offensive line. The only question is the running back position. But if you got a good offensive line and you got a, a potent passing game, you'll be able to run the ball. So – True Wilson and Christian Turner and Charbonnet, none of these dudes are scrubs. So as long as, we, as long as we're moving the ball through the air and our offensive line is creating holes, these dudes are going to be picking up yardage and everything. So I'm, I'm tr I have faith in the offense. It's just the defense and Don Brown in these big games that makes me nervous because he's, he's been exposed in too many big games. And I'm just hoping that he takes takes it upon himself to realize you you can't do what you, you can't just run man all all the time in the Big Ten. You just can't do it. Even when you had like Jordan Lewis and Jabril and all these dudes on that 2016, he didn't just run man. He ran he he ran man and zone. And we also we had Josh Gat we had uh we had uh a different uh, our best offensive coordinator since Harbaugh was there and Jed Fish running the offense with Wilton Spate and Devion Smith and those boys, Chesson, Darbo, Amaro Darbo. We had those boys. So we had a, a kind of pretty potent offense. They were putting up about 35 points a game, if not more. So it's, it's all there for me. Like I, I see what's on the table and what we can do because – the Big Ten, these teams aren't just stacked. Like, the teams that, honestly, if if Wisconsin, Penn State, and MSU were all good like they were like three, two, three years ago, our schedule would be hell. But I'm not, I just don't see them being that good. Coming off of last year and then losing a lot of seniors and starters, especially at QB positions, I don't see them being that good. I just don't. So, while they're down, this is when we need to become that powerhouse that we want to be. So, by the time they get back up, it doesn't matter that, you, that you've got your talent up. We're on another level. <laughs> We're on another level. So, it, it, we want to be, get to that point while they're down and catch up to OSU and start, start beating them like everybody else. Because, like... Like uh, I said before, last year, no excuses. Ain't no excuses this year. Now I'm just I'm just gonna rap for a minute. Ain't no excuses this year. <laughs> Ain't no excuses. You got your QB. You got a senior QB. You got a good backup in McCaffrey that can run the offense. You got stud receivers. You got three stud NFL receivers. All those boys will be starting and playing on Sundays. You got good tight end that has been in there. You got you got basically everything you need on offense. You got plenty of talent on defense. It ain't no excuses. If you don't get it done, it's on you, Harbaugh, this year. It's on it's on you and your coaches. You got the you got the you got the the, the players to to get us there. The players are there. I'm just going to be honest. The players are there, especially on offense. Defense we got question marks, but most of these players are, are are highly highly touted, and it's your scheme. If you if you if your defensive scheme, you you don't want to change, and we get exposed in the game. Don't play. It ain't the players' fault. It's the coach. So ain't no excuses for ain't no excuses for 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 letting OSU put up fifty or sixty again on us or something. Ain't no excuse. It's this is this is this is get it done year. 
What's this? Year, year five? Year four? I don't matter what it is. This 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 is get it done year. This is that's what this is. So ain't no excuse if if we if we if we end up ten and three again, ain't no excuse. You just you just failed to get these boys prepared, and you that's just all it is. So hey, I come back every year, and I got faith in Harbaugh. He makes changes and tries to do to do what he has to do. But if you don't get it this year, dog, it, ain't no excuse. If you have to go, then that just might be what it is because you can't. Maybe he might not be able to. If we if we don't get it done this year. He might just not he Harbaugh may not be able to win big games, the true big ones. He's had success in the pros, but he didn't win that Super Bowl. He came up a what two, three yards short. So we we haven't seen Harbaugh win the big one on any level. He we haven't seen him win that championship. So that's just what it is. Now the team the team is in Africa right now and I know some people don't like the Africa trip and these trips they take in the summer. Man, come on. <laughs> Let these young dudes enjoy what it enjoy what it is to be a a, a a a college athlete. Like they these dudes don't work hard all their life to get to these this position. And going to these different countries, seeing how other other cultures live and everything. Let these boys enjoy that and, and see what see that life is bigger than football. Ain't nothing wrong with this trip. Them taking a week trip. If you if you if you if you if you think us the team taking a week trip to another country in in May is is making them have a horrible season, you don't know football. Just being real. If you think that this trip makes them lose focus when the season is what may june may june july august the season is four months away pretty much five months away this trip is not having a negative effect on them on the field it's just not it's too far away a week give me a break they can't even practice right now ncaa has regulations and rules about these things but the season is way too far away, and this this is something that's bigger than football. And and we get a lot of recruits from these trips because they see that Harbaugh is doing things outside of football. This this makes this makes players' parents push them to go to Michigan because we already got academics, and the football program is on the rise. And trips like this that that show parents that Harbaugh is gonna take their son and show them that life is bigger than football. It's only going to help us. So, all y'all that don't like the trip, man, start 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 debating if you really if you're really a Michigan fan. Start debating that. Start start really thinking about that, man. Cuz this ain't having no effect on the OSU game. Oh, maybe if they stop going on that trip, they could beat OSU. Really? Come on. Come on, man. But that's all I got for the for the day. I see Michigan being 11 and 2, 12 and 12 and 1, something like that. It's going it's going to come down to the Notre Dame game and the OSU game. But it's really the OSU game cuz Notre Dame is out is out out of conference. But I don't see any Big 10 team beating Michigan besides OSU. Unless maybe maybe Iowa but other than that, I don't I don't see anybody else even having a chance. Not even really having a chance. Maybe MSU. But I just don't see them have I don't see a lot of these teams having the talent at the right positions to beat us, like QB and running back. To beat us, you pretty much need both to be good to beat us. And I don't see these teams having that. So let me know what y'all think in the comments and as always, go blue.